So the third type of transformation we're going to talk about is translations. And this is a term you've already used before because you've translated things in your foreign languages. You've gone from Spanish to English and in English back to Spanish or French or whatever language you're studying. You slide between languages. Well, that's kind of what a translation does. In mathematics, a translation just slides an image. So it's going to slide an image along a vector. Okay, so it maps the image along a vector. We could actually say instead of slide, if I want to be more mathematically accurate, I could say it maps an image along a vector. Okay, our notation for translation, well, you can probably guess it's capital T. So I could translate along a vector, let's call my vector uh, XY. And we sometimes use these types of vectors or arrows, kind of like the greater than less than to do that, of a point AB. And really all that's going to give me is A plus X, B plus Y. And they can write this a couple different ways. They could write it with that type of symbol. They could write it like this. Okay, so using a different symbol, using regular parentheses. I've even seen them write it um, with nothing there. Okay, so that's again the same thing. I have seen them write it as vector v, and when they write it that way, we can't really do the addition here of x and y. When we do a vector v, we actually have to have a picture of what vector v might look like. So vector v might look like that. Okay, I keep using this word vector. What is it? Well, it's maybe a term you've heard from your science classes. A vector is an arrow, basically, that shows distance and direction. Okay, so in your science class, you maybe use a vector in forces. Um, you may be using a vector to show some kind of, I don't know, sunlight. I don't know exactly what, maybe electricity or something like that. But we use it in math to show where something starts, where it's going, so what direction it's going to, and where it ends. It almost looks like a ray, except remember that a ray keeps going on forever. A vector actually stops at the endpoint. So that's something that's different between a vector and a ray. So if we look at this first question, it's saying, hey, what is the vector of this translation? Well, the vector is going to go from the pre-image to the image. So I could actually draw that arrow in, and that's the vector. Okay, so if I want to actually say how big that vector is, I can look at it from an XY standpoint. To get from G to G prime on the X, I had to go back one, two, three. So that's negative three on the X axis. And then I had to go down one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's down six on the Y axis. So I could write it like that. I could write it like this as well. So when I put my answer together, Maybe I'm going to take a translation of negative 3, negative 6 of point G will give me point G prime. And if you look at where G is, G starts at 3, 4, 5, 2. And after the translation of negative 3, negative 6, it ends up at over here, which is 5, plus a negative 3 is 2, 2 plus a negative 6 is negative 4, and that's where you end up at. So these are really easy to work with and really easy to calculate because all you need to do is add and subtract. So how do the rules get written? Well, you'll see it written different ways. Sometimes they'll write it like this. We'll give you x, y, where x is plus, in this case, we'll use this example here plus or minus 3y is minus 6. So that's a way to write this rule. Uh, they could write it as minus 3 minus 6 of a point. Uh, we'll call it AB. And so when you're done, that's just A minus 3, B minus 6. There's different ways to write these vectors and these rules. So be prepared to look at them. I'll show you a bunch of different ways as we write through this problem. So a first example, here's one written in that mapping uh, way. This is called a mapping. Okay, 
So that means that I'm going to take each of my x, y's. I'm going to add 3 to the x, 2 to the y. So the point 0.25 becomes 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 2, 7. There's our answer. A different way to look at it, here we're writing it in what's called function notation. Okay, so function notation says take this translation of this point. So the translation of negative 1, 2 of the point negative 2, 3 will give me negative 2 plus a negative 1 is negative 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. And that's it. Simple as that. So let's try some on your own. Okay, here's a few problems you want to try on your own. Where does this point go to after 5 units up and 2 units to the left? And then for these, if I take D and move it along that vector, what point will it be at? So for these three, you're going to give me the name of the point. Okay? Take a shot at those real quickly. Okay, so coming back and looking at this, be careful. You may have gotten tripped up by this one. X five units up. Remember, up and down are along your Y axis. Two units to the left, that's along the X axis. So this is really a translation of left is negative, so negative 2, up is positive 5. Okay, so be careful. It's easy to miss that one. I was wanting to see how closely you were going to read this. So if you got this wrong, don't worry about it. Just don't do that again. So that's going to be 1, 9. There's your solution. Okay, so 1, 9 is our solution. Here, take the point D. I'm going to move negative 1, so it's back 1 on x, down 2. That puts me at point C. Okay. This one, I'm going to start at point A. I'm going to move 2 to the right, down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Puts me at point B. And the last one, I'm starting at point B. I'm going to move on the x, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. On the y, up 3. 1, 2, 3. And that puts me at point C. So a pretty simple project. These are easy to work with. Just add and subtract. Pay attention to whether you're moving on the x-axis or the y-axis. That's where people make their mistakes. This is the last isometry we're doing. Everything from here on out, we've got one more to do. And that's going to be our non-isometry. Okay. So we'll practice some more on this in class tomorrow. Have a good night.